What's good, YouTubers and YouTubettes? This is JB Sports back again with another one. It's hump day, and uh, tomorrow is a very important day. Big day, you got the purse bid going on between WBO welterweight champion Terrence Bud Crawford and former two-time welterweight champion and a fighter that has one of the best resumes in boxing, Sean Showtime Porter. I'm going to give you some updated uh, information that I'm getting through the grapevine about what potentially can transpire tomorrow. Now, that first bid is going to be on Facebook Live, so I'm going to be tuning in to that. I think it's going to be going down 11 o'clock Central Time, 12 o'clock Eastern, and we're going to check it out. Hopefully you guys check that uh, post bid out. We see what happens, man. Uh, this has got to be the, one of the most intriguing purse bids that I can remember. Actually, I don't remember purse bid being this intriguing. Yeah, and I'm trying to go back and think when would the purse bid been this intriguing? You know, you know the um, Tiafimo Lopez, George Camposos purse bid. It got a lot of headline news after the fact because Triller put a extravagant amount of money on that fight and that kind of turned heads but uh going into that purse bid there wasn't nobody really tripping on that man nobody worried about that everybody was like all right to go to purse bid you know George you know you heard Teofimo Lopez saying it was gonna be some big things going on on the horizon so obviously he had the intel that Triller was gonna be a big money but going into that purse bid everybody was like man you know just gonna take care of your mandatory so we can uh, see a bigger and better things after this fight. Hopefully we can see Teofimo Lopez versus uh, Devin Haney or Teofimo Lopez versus uh, Vasily Lomachenko rematch. You know, people was like looking beyond that. But with that being said, man, you ain't never seen a purse bid get this much uh, intrigue behind it, man. Everybody really excited about this. It's almost like uh, Anticipation of a fight coming up tomorrow. You know, everybody like, man, what's gonna happen with the purse bid? What's gonna happen with that fight Saturday? You know, you know, you know, you uh, you know that Friday before the big fight Saturday. Everybody like, damn, intriguing matchup, man. We're gonna see what happens, man. You got these two combatants, but not a purse bid, man. So that's uh something that's uh I haven't seen in boxing since I've been following it, man. So we will see what happens and we will see what transpires. But it's a couple of uh, key things that I think uh, I'm gonna bring to you guys' attention, man, as far as this purse bid goes. Number one is, this fight is a good fight, but it's not a big fight as far as will this fight attract casual boxing fans? Will this fight produce a number on pay-per-view where whoever is uh, promoting this fight is going to make money? Now, right now, I don't think, you know, a lot of people speculated when this fight first went to first bid, they were thinking like, oh man, uh, Eddie Hearn and Matchroom Boxing USA probably going to bid on this fight. Triller is probably going to bid on this fight. Now, I don't think any one of those two uh, promotional and platform companies are going to bid on the fight. I don't see that happening. I think it's going to be a strictly a bid put in by Top Rank Boxing and the PBC, which they're pretty much their number one promoter is TGB. So I think those are going to be the two main things. Now, the purse split is 60-40. With that being said, Terrence Bud Crawford has a $3.5 million guarantee with top rank boxing. That's the contract he got. He's got one fight left on the contract, and that's going to play a big part in how much top rank bids on that fight. Because I think they're going to have to put a, a bid in at, at least 9 to $10 million. Because you take the 60-40 deal, Say you just do seven million. You take the 60-40 deal. You had to put him right there, three and a half, four million, right in the uh, ballpark of what his uh, guarantee is. But the problem is, what turns will uh, Sean Showtime Porter accept that? Because if that's the case, if say if it's seven million, bid that their top rank put in, and uh, Bud is getting around four million in the neighborhood of four million, that's gonna leave Sean Showtime Porter with his forty percent. At around about three million, and if that's the case, I think Sean Showtime Porter walks away from that fight. He, he's not gonna take that fight for three million dollars. I'm telling you that right now. And then when you gotta put in into the scenario is the undercard. You still got to pay the undercard. So when you bid on that fight, you know you bid on the 
that fight and you're gonna have to put an undercard together. So I'm gonna tell you right now, the undercard, if this fight does uh, get made, the undercard gonna be nothing. You know, don't look for no great undercard. I'll tell you that right now. We ain't been getting no great undercards anyway, but don't look for no great undercard. Cause what you gonna have to pay Terrence Bud Crawford and what you gonna have to pay Sean Showtime Porter, you ain't gonna have uh, too much left. You might have a couple of million left uh, for the undercard. So don't look for no great undercard. I'm telling you that right now. But I'm saying, I said seven million just to, uh, just to let you know how much it would be if uh, it was bidded by seven million. But it's gonna be a much higher bid in my opinion than seven million. I think it's probably gonna be around about 10 million. When you put the undercard in play, it's probably gonna be around about a $10 million bid by top rank of PBC. And if that's the case, um, you know, with the undercard and all that, it's still gonna put Terrence Bud Crawford at around about three and a half, four million, which he is his guarantee which he'll have to pretty much uh, go along with it. That's, that's pretty much in the language in his contract of what he gets per fight. But I don't think Sean Showtime Porter's gonna take no $3 million. Therefore, that's gonna um, make a force of putting the play, the PBC putting in a higher bid. They would have to put in a $12, $13 million bid to satisfy Sean Showtime Porter. Will they be willing to put in that type of bid? Well, you know, you'll be 13 million, and then uh, Bud Crawford's gonna get 60% of that so he's gonna be getting around what, eight million, eight nine million of that, and then you know that's gonna that that, that if that's the case, eight well that's eight million of that, and then that'll put uh, Sean Porter at his five million, which I think he's probably gonna ask for at a minimum to fight Terrence Bud Crawford. See the problem with this fight is it's not big enough for ESPN and uh, Fox to come together. It's not Wilder Fury. It's not even Crawford's Crawford and uh, Earl Spence Jr. Those two fights are big enough where. ESPN and Fox will come together. This fight is not, and that's the problem. That's the crux of the issue. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see how this whole thing plays out, man. But if I had to make an educated guess, I don't think the fight go down. Hopefully I'm wrong. I'll, I'll be more than happy to, you know, eat some crow and be wrong on this. And, you know, PBC come in with some $15 million deal because, you know, they want to do good by uh, Sean Showtime Porter. He's the face of uh, Fox pay-per-view, him and uh, the lady, Miss Albo. I think that's her last name. I think they're the face of boxing, so not face of boxing, but the face of Fox pay-per-view. And I think, uh, you know, I think uh, maybe they would want to uh, do right by him, man. But at the end of the day, man, if it ain't making dollars, it ain't making sense. They're not in the business to lose money. If they bid that high, there's a chance they can lose money. Because you got to take in the fact is how much pay-per-view buys will this fight do? Manny Pacquiao, your Ugas did 250,000 pay-per-view buys. So what you think Crawford and Porter are going to do? Crawford has done two pay-per-views that have fell flat on their face. He did a pay-per-view with Victor Postal. That was a unification at 140 pounds. That fight did 60,000 buys. Then he did a Another pay-per-view with Amir Khan, who had a huge name, not only in the UK, but in the US. And that fight did 150,000 buys. Both fights lost a lot of money. That's why you heard Bob Arum come out and say right before the uh, Terrence Crawford kill Brook fight that he lost a lot of money on Terrence Crawford. The money he lost on Terrence Crawford, he could have built a, a mansion in Beverly Hills. So uh, this is the last fight on the deal with top rank. And Bob Arum is just trying to fulfill their obligation. They're ready to move on, man. If Terrence Bud Crawford wants to work with them in the future, fine. If he doesn't, fine. I don't think they're losing any sleep. They're putting all their eggs in, in the basket of Teofima Lopez and Tyson Fury and uh, Berlanga and those guys. That's that's the people that are putting their uh, money behind. They look at uh, they look at Terrence Crawford as a uh, Tim Bradley 2.0. Good guy, family man, does uh, the right things outside the ring. Don't get in too much trouble outside the ring. A good ambassador to the sport, but the guy can't even sell out a family reunion, man. Basically, that's how they look at uh, <laughs> that's how they look at uh, Terrence Crawford, man. It's a shame, man. A lot of people uh will say, well, shit, he, he knocks guys out. He puts on exciting fights in the ring. He's got six straight knockouts. Why do he got to talk and be a separate mode outside the ring? Why don't he? Why, why can't he just uh, go home, spend time with his family, and go fishing? Yeah, that's good, man. But you got to look at the blueprint. That's money made. He put on some boring fights. But he sold the fight outside the ring. He sold his uh, record, never being defeated. When people wanted to see him lose, people wanted him to be sh shut up, kind of like the Muhammad Ali situation. And Terrence Bud Crawford got to understand that man. He based in that same mode of a Timmy Bra Timothy Bradley and Andre Ward, you know, to a certain extent. He's in that same boat. Good, great fighter, Hall of Fame fighter, but was never a pay-per-view attraction. 
So that's the crux of the issue, man. We will see what happens. We will see what transpires. But if I had to put a percentage on it, I think it's 60-40 that the fight don't happen. Like Just like the first split is 60-40, I think it's 60-40 the fight don't happen. Hopefully I'm wrong. We will see what happens and we will see what transpires. But wouldn't be a bit surprised if either party walks away. One party bids on the fight and uh, PBC know that Sean Porter's not going to get his five million and probably end up with three million from the forty percent split. Wouldn't be a bit surprised if Al Heyman and Sean Porter walks away and pursue another fight. You know, thing about the PBC, they got a bunch of welterweights over there. You know, they got Jose Cito Lopez, they got Abel Ramos. They could maybe put a fight with uh, Keith Thurman, Keith Thurman and Sean Porter. They could put that fight on on uh, pay per view. You know, they put Chris Ariola and uh, and uh, Andy Ruiz Jr. on pay per view. They could put that fight between those two probably in the Stub Hub Center. You know, downgrade the um, the uh, pay per view price. Maybe put that at like forty nine ninety nine, and uh, sell the hell out of that fight. You got Keith Thurman out here. He's he shows up to these fights and he does all these videos going in on uh, Leonard Ellerbe and stuff like that. He gets a lot of buzz behind him. He's got to do the same thing in the lead up to a potential fight with Sean Showtime Porter. Porter has a good uh, mouthpiece too, as he's an analyst, so he knows how to promote a fight too. So I think that would be a good fight. You look at the last. The first fight those guys fought, that was a low-key fight of the year type of fight. Great fight at a high level. I don't think neither fighter's been quite the same after that fight, but they could be. Uh, they could be. That could be the storyline leading up to this fight, man. So that could be a possible matchup. He has way more options, where which would be make it easier for Sean Porter to walk away from that fight than a Terence Crawford. A Terence Crawford, he could, if he don't get the Sean Porter fight, who's he gonna fight? David Avenesian. That probably will be the likely opponent, and that fight will be. You know, as far as Terrence Crawford goes, he's still going to get his three and a half million, so he ain't tripping, but that fight is not going to uh, quiet the critics saying you ain't fought nobody at 147, even though Avanesia is a solid fight. He's probably a top 10, top 15 fighter. I see Conor Ben didn't want to fight him. He ducked him. Now he's fighting Adrian Granados uh, this weekend. He could have fought Avanesia. Avanesia fought, well, he stopped that, uh, that other hype job over there in the UK, uh, what, Josh Kelly? I don't think Conor Ben is a hype job, but when you're looking at the three young guns, that being Connor Ben, Jerome Boost Ennis, and Virgil Ortiz. If I had to rate by talent wise, I got Jerome Boost Ennis one, Virgil Ortiz Jr. two, and Connor Ben three out of those three guys. Now, as far as resume, who's fought the better competition? Virgil Ortiz has been there with the better competition. He fought Maurice Hooker, then he just got through fighting the Green Machine, uh, Igus Cavalaskis. Jerome Boost Ennis just fought, uh, what, Lippinets, and that's it. Now, he's going to fight Delorme. But Delorme is not on the level of uh, Kavalaskis. He ain't, he ain't even on the level of uh, of Amari Sucker. You know, even though Amari Sucker hadn't fought at 147. But you look at him, he's a former champion at 140. And he's a guy that, well, he's lost what, twice. He's a guy with a high level, high skill level. So when you look at the resume, it's obvious it's Virgil Ortiz, one, Jerome, Bennis, Jerome Boost Ennis, two, and Connor Ben, three. Connor Ben is best win is against Samuel Vargas, who's nothing but a journeyman fighter, stepping stone fighter. C level fighter. He's best known for what dropping a mere glass jaw con and getting uh, robbed out of the decision victory. That could have uh, been the best victory of his career. Didn't get that victory because he wasn't a name. He wasn't a house fighter. It was a mere con as they was looking to set the stage for a bigger fight afterwards. So let me know your thoughts about uh, Sean Porter, Terrence Bud Crawford, first bid coming up tomorrow. Let me know how you think it's going to play out. And if it does play out, who you like in that particular matchup? And we will see what happens. And we will see what transpires. Hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel. And, and subscribe to JB Sports. The man. The myth. The legend. I holla.